Please welcome Dr. Ann Ramoyne. Thank you so much. Oh, we're not. I was gonna bow. But we like see, to I was. Fist I bumps. told everybody. No, not even fist bumps. The Japanese had the right idea. We don't know where that hair, hand has been. <laughs> That's. Exactly. No, I don't mean you in particular, but uh, but you know you're okay, right? I, as far as you know. <laughs> <laughs> How <laughs> come? But look, I mean, I said it a minute ago. Life will change, right? And it, and it should. First of all, you know what? I never liked the handshake anyway. I don't think it adds anything to anything, right? Anybody who you really care about touching you, you don't shake hands with. <laughs> well, you know, there are lots of other things you can do. Like I said, you could do the fist bump. You could That's do the wow. Ebola elbow. Uh, or you could just wave. Yes. Or <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> There are even studies now or projects where they're trying to have handshake-free zones in hospitals just for the very same reason that we don't want to be transmitting disease. And this was long before right. this new coronavirus came I was told that during the Spanish flu in 1918, they stopped people. Well, they tried to stop. They had a big campaign against spitting. People used to just hock a loogie whenever. <laughs> Some still better? do, <laughs> but we don't. As a as a nation, we generally don't expectorate. Correct. Correct. Thank you. So life is better post epidemic. <laughs> Let's talk about the Spanish flu mm -hmm. because it got my attention that they said about two percent mm -hmm. of the world died in that one, or who got it. Right. And that seems to be the same number they're saying now for this. Mm -hmm. I mean, I always heard the Spanish flu was a rough one. And obviously, if the numbers are the same, would you say this is a good comparison? Well, it's, it's not time yet to compare this to the flu. Um, and not even the Spanish flu. This is a different kind of virus, and we're still learning a lot about it. I mean, it, listen, it's always scary when you have a new pathogen jumping from right. animals into a human population yes. and starting to spread. And we just don't know enough about this disease yet to really make uh, strong comparisons. Because when we talk about the Spanish flu, we think, you know, we can, we can talk about it from a very long distance. And we know exactly how many cases there were. Right. We know now all about the epidemiology of the, of the virus um, or of the disease. But, but back then, we, you know, we, we didn't, and people were just as scared then but as if they it's are not now. a flu what is it so it's a coronavirus and a coronavirus is different from an influenza virus oh. coronaviruses are a large family of viruses they also cause respiratory infections mm -hmm. but most of them are in animals not in humans yes what is it with that humans will put anything in their mouth <laughs> it's, seriously I mean isn't this this started when someone ate a bat, and I was thinking, oh, these primitives. And I remember Ozzy Osbourne ate a bat before every show. <laughs> well, it actually isn't coming directly from bats. And um, same thing with SARS um, or MERS. We think that these, these viruses originate in bats, and then they jump to another species um, with SARS. It was a civet cat. Uh, with MERS, it seemed to be a camel. And in this instance, we're not sure yet, but it seems like it might be a pangolin. And so it comes- A what? A pangolin. Which which is a very small animal mm. that uh, it's actually the most uh, trafficked animal in the world. Mm. Um, they're they, eating it? They're eating it. It looks like a, an armadillo. But they and, weren't eating the camel. Uh, they, well, people were, were, at least were, in, <laughs> these were in areas where people uh, were, were using camels. They were, it was different. <laughs> anyway. Um, uh, <laughs> no, but, the, but, you know, you bring up a really good point. These things often happen around wet markets, and these are open air markets oh. where you have animals and so you can imagine walking into these markets mm. that happen uh, everywhere in the world but in particular in Asia and Africa where you'll have you know you'll have bats in a cage and then you'll have pangolins in a cage above it or uh, you know yeah. civet cats in another one and so you're having all of these species right. all together stressed and they're spreading disease to each other and it's it's amazing what the human body can ingest and be okay <laughs> Right? It's true. I mean, if That's you ever true. walk through, you know, markets just in this country in a certain ethnic, Chinatown, I've seen, you know, shit on sticks and <laughs> animals hanging. In, I mean, it's like <laughs> our, our, our digestive system is almost too strong. It can take so much that we'll just put any piece of shit in our mouth. <laughs>
<laughs> well, you know, I often, when I teach a class on epidemiology, I often use the example people, because I work on Ebola. It's another thing that I spend a lot of time working on. Good. And uh, and uh, that is also uh, a disease that crosses species from animals to humans. Sure. And people often talk about, well, people eat bats, and how could they eat bats? And I say, well, you know, I mean, culturally, people eat all sorts right. of things. Um, and, and most of the time, you're not getting a disease spilling over. I mean, people eat meat, but you know there's so bad cow disease. If, right? yeah, well, yeah. If, if you were the czar, the Mike Pence job, mm -hmm. would you... S <laughs> <laughs> Crazy idea, you with your degrees and a title I can't even pronounce, but okay. So would you stop planes from overseas, from certain countries from coming in here? Well, I think, you know, these kinds of draconian measures of stopping travel, they don't really work at the end really? of the day. I mean, listen, the virus is already here. We already right. know that it's here and it's already spreading. And the problem is when you really stop travel and you have all these travel bans, people find ways in and then you can't track them and then you don't know what's happening. And so, you know, you, you have to be careful when you really start putting these, these rules in place that are supposed to stop people and then people who really want to get in, they're going to find another way. Um, also, it has so many problems with trade and, and um, you know, all but, these other dip diplomatic issues. It, it, it doesn't necessarily make that much of a difference. Wow. So there, there are better ways to be able Can to... Can you get it this. twice? Um, you know, that's a good question. For this particular coronavirus, we don't know. There are other coronaviruses where people have been able to be reinfected, mm. but with this one, we don't know yet. But, but don't you build up, isn't that the whole point, is that you, you get something or you get a vaccine for it and then you have the immunity? Why doesn't it work after one time? Well, you know, that just certain diseases um, do not... Uh, do not provide immunity after the fact, and which is why you can keep getting them. Um, you Oof. know, strep throat is another example you could get right. that again, right? So um, right now we don't know. It's very possible that, that you could have immunity at least for a period of time with this coronavirus, but, but right now, like so many things about this virus. But you're very cheery know. about it. I like that. No, I mean, I mean, <laughs> no, that's one reason I wanted to have you on. I, I learned this word once, catastrophizing, when you make things that are not a catastrophe into a catastrophe, and that isn't helpful. And we don't right. really, it's not even appropriate right now. Is that correct? Right. No, you have to keep everything into perspective here. Right. And, and right now, we are learning what's happening. We do not have widespread uh, transmission here in the United States. We're still trying to figure out... Isn't that, isn't that inevitable? Um, you we're probably going to have a, a, a fair amount of spread here in the United States, but we don't know how much and we don't but, know where, and it's not going to happen overnight either. No, but so what does happen if there are two... I mean, we only have a certain number of hospital beds, and we're not going to build one in a week like the Chinese. Right, right. Um, not that that was really a hospital. <laughs> But I don't know if we could even put up a room with beds. We can't build homing for the hum housing for the homeless. So I don't have... Well, you know, you're, you're bringing up I assume you're point. cheering that that's a bed. <laughs> <laughs> no housing for the homeless, great. Uh, no, but you're bringing what, up a really what, good What do we do if, if all the beds are filled and there's X thousands more people who need a respirator? Right. Well, so, so first of all, what is going to happen is we're not going to see, like I said, you're not going to have this happen all overnight. Right. And we've but... had other um, bad flu seasons. Um, you know, we had the, we've already had a pandemic here. We had the H1N1 pandemic right. in 2009. So we have hospitals prepared to a certain degree. We know what they need to do. They know what they need to do. People have been preparing for this. You know, you can set up makeshift hospitals as right. needed. But I think that this really brings up the important point about pandemic preparedness and how important it is to be prepared. And, and the problem has been is there haven't been there hasn't been good funding for this in a long time. And in we fact, cut ever. It now, more. No. It, 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 but no administration has been good can, at funding pandemic preparedness. Okay. Can I ask you it's a semi-political question, but it is a political show. Um, Bernie Sanders, mm -hmm. um, you know, when people campaign for president, it's grueling. They always get sick, as you might imagine. They're in planes all day with that crappy air recirculating, and you're run down. Um, plus, he's 78. Mm -hmm. He just had a heart attack. Mm -hmm. He showed this picture. He's always in crowds touching a lot of people. What's the over-under on him making it to election? <laughs> I, I mean, th this does not... <laughs> this... 
<laughs> Honestly, seems like a perfect storm for him not... Well, you know, um, the, the disease is definitely... Um, people don't have as, as um, successful uh, Now you're not outcomes. so cheery, are you? <laughs> they don't have as successful outcomes um, uh, hey, in, in people that are okay. older or who have comorbidities. If you love Bernie, don't touch him, right? <laughs> well, you know, Seriously, I would bet you that don't Bernie, touch Bernie. I would bet you that Bernie is doing what everybody else should be doing right now, which is washing your hands yes, regularly, I don't, but not touching your face. I don't know if the <laughs> I go into the crowd and touch a million people think yeah. and survive this or I say life will change. Well, life and will change. And that's yes, and that's okay. And and it is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But ultimately, I would think my th theory, you have to be good about how you take care of yourself. Your best line of defense is it not your own immune system? Germs, pathogens are ubiquitous. Y you can't become Howard Hughes locked in an airtight room, pissing into jars. <laughs> That's the only other alternative. Right. Um, I mean, people who put hand sanitizer all over their hands all day, I've had more than one very smart doctor tell me that destroys the pH on the skin, makes it more permeable. Uh, you have to have a good immune system. Stop eating sugar. Wouldn't that be a great start? Well, I, you know, there are so many things that you can be doing. And sure, sugar can cause inflammation like so many other things. Smoking causes Isn't it the worst thing for your immune system is well, sugar? There are so many things that are bad for, immune, for your but immune system. But wouldn't sugar be number one? Uh, <laughs> sugar is in the, in, on the list of the top things that you should probably decrease. It's the worst. <laughs> but, but, you know, there, there, you know, smoking is also bad well, for of you. Course, and and yes. people should exercise more right. and they should eat well in right. general. And I think that that's really important. And, and so I agree okay. with you, being healthy and doing everything you can to make sure yes. you are healthy, including maybe right. eating less sugar, would be a good thing to do. No sugar. But um, <laughs> finally, whatever it is, they always end, don't they? They do. Uh, the, they do. Fl fl whatever. It's got, it, it will end. It runs its course and then it ends. Well, I mean, most of these viruses will disappear, although there are some instances where they become endemic. Let's maybe. end on that. <laughs> Let's say they always end. All right. Thank you, doctor. I am Pleasure. bowing to you. It's a pleasure. Let's meet our family.